Yo, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Bernie, here, bringing you yet another video here in the charge, giving you the latest NBA news and rumors and also basketball opinions. And before we get started on to today's topic, talking about the NBA draft and also Michael Porter Jr., go and hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. Go and check out our awesome content that we have out here. We got videos talking about Kyrie Irving to the New York Knicks, Could It Happen by my boy Pete. Go and check that out. It's an interesting watch. And also go and check out the coverage update on the Lonzo Ball, Kyle Kuzma thing. Could it affect LeBron James going to LA? That's another question that is being asked around the league but right now we got to talk about this topic and that is of course michael porter jr cancels the second pro day because of a strained hip and this is what jonathan gavoni had to say of espn former missouri forward michael porter jr canceled a second pro day in chicago on friday because of a strained hip sources told espn Porter could not get out of bed because of muscle spasms, according to the sources. NBA lottery teams were told that Wednesday afternoon that the workout has been canceled. Rescheduling appears to be a possibility depending on how he responds to the treatment over the next few days, but there's no guarantee that occurs with the draft only one week away. Some teams will send representatives to meet with Porter in Chicago on Friday, according to sources. And to me, I think the reason why he put out this reporter, this report is coming out, is because he wants to be drafted lower, I think. I think he's one of those guys that saw where he could be potentially going and he doesn't want to go there My, cleveland why would you want to go to cleveland there's nothing there for you the pieces aren't there to fall he would rather go in the later lottery than the earlier lottery because if you look at some of the teams unless you're going to a chicago which could potentially could pass up on him a philadelphia i think you gotta see if you can go down to like a, a clippers even though they're not very good you still go down to LA, it's still LA. You go down to a Denver who has a very young team up and coming with the pieces that they have around him. And maybe, hell, you even go to Phoenix to team up with DeAndre Ayton. You know, he could fall down there. Or even 17 to Milwaukee. San Antonio could be another thing. But I think if you fall down the lottery, obviously you're going to be losing a little bit of money, which no one really wants to do that. I'm sure the agent doesn't want to. But if he can get his player in a better situation to perform better in a better team... Why not do it? I know this is kind of rem reminiscing of the Eli Manning thing, of the John Elway thing, but if he's going to be happier in a different place, if he's going to be happier playing in the Denvers, the Phoenix, and the later pick, you know, San Antonio with the culture that they have, then I think you take that risk because Michael Porter Jr. is one of those guys when he's coming out of high school that was going to be a top two type of player. It was between him and Luka Doncic. But now DeAndre Ayton has taken that spot. Michael Porter Jr. unfortunately got injured during the season, so he couldn't really show out his skill set. I still thought he was going to be a top five pick, but it looks like he wants to change kind of where he goes because he's more in favor of being a player that could help a playoff-ready team. But, I mean, I want to know your guys' opinion on that. Do you think that Michael Porter Jr. will fall that low, or will the team take a chance on him? Would a Memphis, would a Dallas, an Atlanta, a Sacramento, would they take a chance on him? We obviously know that Phoenix is going to be drafting DeAndre Ayton number one. And then another story that's pretty interesting to me is the fact that the Atlanta Hawks, I'm sorry, not the Atlanta Hawks, the Sacramento Kings and the Dallas Mavericks are deciding to trade down their picks if they can't get the player that they want. Luka Doncic is obviously being looked at as someone that could be the number two pick. But right now, according to NBA Draft.net and everywhere I'm seeing, Marvin Bagley is being the number two pick for a lot of guys' mock drafts. And to me, I'm a little bit questioning on that. I think Marvin Bagley is a great player. I think he's going to be fine in this league. I don't think he's going to be great. But a guy that's going to be great is Luka Doncic, in my opinion, and also my boy Pete's opinion. We think that Luka Doncic is one of those guys that could really change the league he could be a franchise setting player and the fact that sacramento atlanta are going to be passing up on him potentially and i know i talked about dallas so i'll get back to them in a little bit if he falls down what what are these other teams doing sacramento you have a chance to become relevant again since what the 2002 2003 season when you had you know chris weber mike bibby and all those guys do you want to be relevant again or do you want to be in obscurity i love your two pieces and bogdan bogdanovich and De'Aaron Fox I think those two guys are going to be your cornerstone guys if he can just add one more for a guy that can play off the ball on the ball yeah he's not as athletic as the other guys but still he is one of those guys that can change the pace he's a if you see him on the fast break it's it's over especially with De'Aaron Fox running it my god they should be winning games easily and if they can add you know another big man in next year's draft or if they decide to sign someone in 2018 or even 2019 this team could be a team that can make the playoffs relatively soon so if we can get Sacramento, Luka Dantich, 
I think that's who you take. You can't be focused on these big men. The only big man I would be acceptable for you to take is Mobamba because he, and along with Jaron Jackson Jr., have kind of the ceilings are higher than their floors. But with Mo Bamba, I think the ceiling is even higher. So if you're going to take a risk on anybody, you take it on Mo Bamba. You don't take it on Marvin Bagley. Marvin Bagley is the safe pick. I know the Sacramento Kings, they haven't had great ownership. They haven't had great GM presence at all in their in their whole history with the players that they took, like Jimmer Fredette and Nick Staukas. So you get your guy, Luka Doncic, and he's the safest guy because he's one of those guys that's played 78 games and he's going to be more comparable to an nba player who plays 82 games so compared to these other guys who play 30 games i think you take a risk on luka Doncic. it's not even a risk you just get luka Doncic because he's one of those guys that can change your franchise and i know i keep repeating that but it, i just want to make it a point of emphasis because teams are being very not smart i don't know how to put it in a nicer term they're just not being smart and thinking logically with this pick and also with the Dallas Mavericks, I'm sure they want to get Luka Doncic because Dennis Smith Jr., Luka Doncic, and, you know, maybe another big man. Maybe it's Mo Bamba. Maybe it's Jaron Jackson Jr. If you could just get those guys together, I think it would be a great combination. Obviously, you're going to have to choose between those guys. In my opinion, if Luka Doncic falls to them, that's going to be the biggest gift that was ever given to any team because Luka Doncic is just that good. And I'm going to stop talking about Luka Doncic because I think Mo Bamba is another guy that could be potentially going to the Dallas Mavericks if they want him and if we look at his profile if we look at his draft express if we look at his workouts he's been shooting a lot better he's been working on so many post moves that Joel Embiid has been working on throughout his career if we can get Mo Bamba there early he could be Rudy Gobert with a mix of a big man that's skilled I mean we have yet to see that in the NBA Mo Bamba would be the first guy to be like this whole defensive offensive guy and he could potentially project better than DeAndre Ayton even though I like Ayton myself I think he's a great player Mo Bamba is one of those guys with the highest ceilings and there's a reason why teams are trying to trade up for him we got guys like the Boston Celtics my team is trying to trade up for him because we see how much of a talent he could be and under Brad Stevens player he would be the ceiling would just be unlimited with him and I think Dallas would be a good place for him as well and other than that, the other news is really Colin Sexton. He's been falling a little bit. I want to know your guys' opinion on Colin Sexton. Do you like him? Do you dislike him? I know the Cleveland Cavaliers are very interested in him because Dan Gilbert went to go watch him and also went to his workout. He was very impressed with him. And do you think it would be a smooth move or a new move for the Cleveland Cavaliers to get Colin Sexton? I'd love to know your guys' opinion on that. But anyway, guys, this has been your boy Bernie here on The Charge. Give me the latest NBA news and rumors and also basketball opinions. Go and hit that subscribe button. Go and hit those like buttons on our videos. Go and check out our awesome content, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace!